What is going on everybody? This is Jay from Maji and Jay and as you guys saw already from that quick unboxing today we are reviewing the Moto G5 Plus as one of the best budget phones for 2017. I got this directly from Amazon.com and I got the one with the Amazon ads on it so for that reason I got it $60 cheaper than normal. This device with 4 gigs and 64 gigs of internal storage comes at a price point of $299 and I got it for $239. And they also have another variant of two gigabytes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage for about $185. Now this device here carries the Snapdragon 625 octa-core. You have a 5.2 inch 1080p display, a 5 megapixel shooter on the front with the ability to record in 1080p, and a 12 megapixel shooter with an aperture of 1.7 and the ability to record in 4K. Now also we have a 3000 million battery built in and I think guys that this is definitely one of the best budget phones because of all the features that it carries and also comes with the new Android 7.0 Nougat. So getting a look here at the phone physically on the right hand side we find the volume rockers up and down together with the power key and they are very easy to detect as they are separated quite a bunch. On the top here we find the SD card slash SIM card tray. Now the way that they designed it is very weird because you had to place both of them on the opposite side and sometimes when you put let's say the SIM card then the SD card tray comes off and sometimes it's a struggle but you can get it done if you have patience. On the left hand side here we find the metallic frame and it's very clean, we don't have any buttons whatsoever. Then towards the bottom side here we find the outdated micro USB port but for the price maybe we can't get that picky. We have the main microphone and also the 3.5mm headphone jack. Now towards the back we find that 12 megapixel shooter with the dual tone LED flash. We find the model logo, the model number and also the secondary microphone. Now towards the front side here we find that display that I was mentioning before with the 1080p um, resolution and 5.2 inches and then towards the top here we find the loudspeaker slash earpiece and it's actually quite loud and the cool part is that you don't run the risk of accidentally placing your finger over it and muffling the sound. We have a 5 megapixel shooter as well and then on the bottom we have the fingerprint scanner. Now we're not going to have the back key and the menu key located as a um, hardware key, they're going to be located on the operating system. So getting a look here at the phone, at least on the lock screen side, we can see that this is carrying a clean version of the Android 7.0 but they had tweaked that a little bit for the better and that's very common from the Moto company. So getting this thing unlocked, here we find the UI and as I said before guys, this is very fast and snappy. You can play pretty much any game out there that you wish. And here I have conducted the Intuito benchmark test so that you guys can see that it still gets a very nice score, something that we don't see on many Chinese devices. I mean, I remember when we had the uh, Yumi uh, Z Pro, that's actually one of the best Chinese phones that I've ever tested and it scored over 100,000, but again, it had the lack of 4G LTE support, something that we will get with the Moto G5 Plus. So here's the score, 64, uh, I'm sorry, 62,000, and I get variance between 60 and 70,000. So that's a pretty acceptable score in my opinion, especially for the price of this device. And here we find the remaining of the information. Now keep in mind guys that this is not a clone because I know a lot of you guys will ask me, AJ, did you get a replica of the Moto G5 Plus? And no, this is the authentic device. Again, I got it from the Amazon Prime services and I will be providing the link below in case you guys are interested. So now here we're going to check the camera as it is advertised even on the box to be very high quality as you guys can see right there and they are also advertising the battery pretty much the highlights of the phone which is the processor, the battery, the screen and the camera. As we know many budget devices out there for this price range do not include a 4K recording camera so this one does. How great is it? I think it's perfect especially if you guys are recording in daylight time you're gonna get perfect pictures great and white balance great saturation and overall nice photo quality as well now when you guys go into nighttime it's going to be a little bit grainy on the picture side and the quality is not going to be the same but I think that's quite acceptable for a device again for this price $239 so now here flipping the camera to the front side, we can see that it has very nice quality. It comes with autofocus as well. So definitely a great, great camera for a budget device. One of the best that I've seen in a very, very long time. Also other great features about this particular model and also other Moto G devices is the fact that you can use gestures such as moving it likewise to turn on the camera and we have another one where you can turn on the flashlight as you guys can see and these are definitely things that will stand out this device from the competition. 
So if you go here into settings, you're going to find that we do have in fact the Android 7.0 Nougat right there. And here is the information for the device. Um, also we have here settings and settings are pretty much basic for this device. They don't include anything crazy or any new features that we haven't seen on other smartphones before. We do have language and input and on here we can do what we have seen on other devices. We can just simply download the language that's needed instead of having everything already on the operating system causing more storage to be used. So yes guys, all in all I have to say that this device is definitely one of the best budget phones out there so far based on the testing that I've conducted. So far we have seen that it has LTE support, we have seen the camera to be very competitive, the front facing camera is also great and now something that I want to test here is the sound. The sound is not really the greatest out there but again we can't really get everything with a budget device. So let's go ahead and play here one of my videos so that you guys get an idea of how it sounds. So let's play, let's say this one here, family meeting, since it has the music on there. So now to talk about some of the cons of the Moto G5 Plus, first of all we're not going to get NFC, something that a lot of you guys depend out there on, especially with Android Pay. I do use it once in a while in case I forget my wallet, I do have the second option to pay. So yes, not having NFC which is a very inexpensive feature, I think it's a little bit of a bummer. Second, we do not have the USB Type-C port as I mentioned before. And third, the camera does not have optical image stabilization. Other than those three issues, I think this is definitely a great device for anybody out there, including international users as well, since we are getting many bands supported on this device for 4G LTE support, and that's definitely a plus. And I think that compared to other Chinese devices, this is the best of 2017, and I can recommend it to anybody. So with this being said, if you guys have any questions, you know exactly what to do, just leave your comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you think it was helpful, and I'll see you guys on my next one.